Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I've got kind of a weird build going on, if you can even call it that. Um, I think we should just get right into what this video is going to be. This build is going to be called Abomination, because it's an abomination. Basically, I need to use this board for a special project. This is a Gigabyte uh, GAZ97N. I don't know, but basically it's an ITX board. It's Z97, the chipset. If you've never heard of that, um, it's the it's basically the older version of like Z170, 270, you know, uh, Z97. So it's it's fourth gen, fifth gen Intel um, chipset. And, you know, it's like the 4790K. That's the chipset it uses is Z97. So we're going to build a system with this. Now, I don't have like a 4790K or anything, so it's not like a gaming PC. It's more or less just like the purpose of this build will actually be fully revealed in a later video. Um, but I definitely want to get this built. And for our CPU today, we have something very special. So... We we needed something that was very inexpensive, but also would work in this chipset to boot it to at least Windows and Windows 10. Now, sadly, I can't test gaming performance because this is the only SSD I have that'll work with this board because I my boot like test drive with uh, with games on it is actually an NVMe and Z97 without BIOS updates and all that. And this is a stock board as far as I know. It does not support booting from a uh, NVMe SSD, so I don't know if we'll be able to test any games on it, but. Trust me, we won't need to because the CPU we're using in this build is the $10 i3-4130T. Yes, 4130T. If you don't know what T means, it actually means it's the, um, it is the slightly clocked lower version of a CPU that takes up less power and therefore outputs less heat. T means thermals or something. It's the low power variant, so there's a like a 7700T, 6700T, and this is, you know, just way worse. This is the 4130T. This is a two-core, four-thread part uh, clocked at a whopping 2.9 gigahertz, which is actually pretty high for a T part. I've seen them as low as like 2.6, uh, etc. But let's just get right into this build. It'll be a quick build. Oh, and for cooling, um... It's this. This is an abomination of a cooler for abomination of a PC. This actually came with this CPU, and wow, this is disgusting. But if it works, it works. So we're actually going to be doing a lot of videos about Intel CPUs coming up, because I do have a couple I can't wait to make videos on, uh, including another ITX build. So we'll just, this board, super easy, classic Intel install. Though I hate, I hate working with LGA boards. I do not like pins on a socket. They are too delicate. AMD CPUs just drop in, easy peasy. This is a little harder. What just fell? Okay, right. And then this requires an uncomfortable amount of force. And there we go. Our CPU is installed. 4130T in our Z97 chipset. Like I said, so this build does have a specific purpose. Now, some of you are probably thinking, oh, maybe it's like a media PC. And, well, that would be a good idea. A PC, you know, integrated graphics. We're not going to use a graphics card or anything. Just integrated graphics using this power supply to test. Uh, not this one. This one's disgusting. Um, so it is DDR3, so we're going to load it with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 because I have no other use for DDR3 except for my other board, which is the Optron board, and that doesn't matter. This has a great graphics, so I can use a graphics card. Now, some of you are probably thinking, like I said, multimedia PC, something like that. No, this has a very specific, and this sounds like a waste, but yes, one use. This CPU is going to be a one use CPU. Some of you, if you're an enthusiast or smart, have probably guessed what this is for, but I'm gonna keep it a secret till I make the video that explains everything. Where's our cooler? I don't like these stock coolers. Like, they should be easier than they are, but uh, why would they be? to install does it even i was about to say does it it came with the dang cpu and the mounting holes have been the same for the past few years i don't like there's they added rotation and i don't know why there needs to be a rotation aspect now there's already thermal paste on the cooler so i'm reusing thermal paste and if you have a problem with that build your own pc again this like i don't get why this won't work half the time is that in that looks like it's on a lot of snapping happened you know, I, I, I have a love for ITX because of just how dense you can make a board and stuff. Like, you know, you wouldn't believe, this is a whole, basically speaking, like a whole PC, you know, RAM, CPU, I guess graphics, you know, graphics card. But no, it's got graphics on it. This could, this is it. 
This is smaller than like a console. You put it in a tiny box with a little power supply, not like something like this, but like an SFX or a Flex ATX or something like that. And you have like a little box to watch like Netflix on or something. Obviously, you'd probably use even a better processor than this, but you know, generally speaking, this is a nice little board. And um, we're just going to, we're just gonna plug it in here. So we've only got, oh, I dropped my SSD. I almost forgot about the SSD. Um, let's actually go grab a SATA connector because I forgot it entirely. I haven't used SATA in forever. Here is our EVGA SATA connector. If this connector does not work and fries our SSD, I'm going to be very disappointed, but it'll make for interesting content. Fries our power supply, that's a problem. Anywho, um, I don't know why I'm using these disgusting SATA cables. Either way, the SATA cables are flat on the board. Perfect. And um, just connect the rest of our power cables. And the other problem is, is we gotta reach these wires like over. Cause like in a case, it's sideways, so you don't have to reach them over the board. But I don't have an ITX case. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I thought, cause it would've been funny. You tell me if you think this would've been funny. I was gonna put this in like a giant case, just for the means like, uh, or even like something like an H510 or just like a huge, you know, PC11 like XL or just something big, like a huge PC case just for a joke. But honestly, that's too much work. And I would just, there would be people who don't get it and would ask me about it. And that would be very disappointing and saddening. So this is it. That's our PC. There's more power. The power supply is bigger than the board, in case you're wondering. Let's, uh, let's plug in our HDMI. So we've got our HDMI in and our monitor on. Let's plug in our power supply. Let's plug that in just like that. Turn it on and let's short the power connector just like so. And it boots. Hey, we get red LEDs. I love red lights. I love board lights. I know you can barely see me. Gotta love this wide angle. And it launches. I'm so smart. Let's see if it loot boots right to Windows. Loots. Let's see if it loots, man. So we've got our classic gigabyte durable. Get that a lot. I use a lot of these in ultra durable. That's like their that's like their cheap brand, you know, like their gigabytes like budget, you know, DS3H. It's all the ultra durable and stuff, and that's how I use a ton of that. Let's see if we boot to Windows. That would be great. And that'll be, sadly, basically the whole video because um, you can't do any... I don't have, like, anything on this SSD I can do testing with. Um, and also, I mean, it's a, it's a dual-core CPU. I don't know what you're expecting. It's getting devices ready. I, I Cool. I'm wondering if this is even powerful enough to load Windows. Yeah, again, sorry about the camera angle, but I mean, I want to show the screen mostly because that's really where anything interesting is happening. And uh, this is the only way to do it without a camera person. Okay, oh, it turned off for a sec. Monitor is back on. I hope this is going to work. Yeah, I'm starting to seriously wonder if this CPU is powerful enough for Windows. I think it passes the minimum spec. I mean, we have enough RAM. We got 16 gigs. But I'm wondering if this 4130T dual core can... I hope, I'm pretty sure it can launch Windows 10. Yeah, there we go. Alright, let's log in for a sec. I want to check Task Manager and everything. Make sure everything's showing up. The only thing missing from this ITX board uh, compared to something like this Z170i that I have here is on the back of the Z170i board, there is a M.2 slot. Z97 is when M.2 was kind of a new technology, NVMe was a whole like new thing, so it doesn't have any M.2 slots on the board whatsoever, which kind of sucks. Yes, we get it, we don't have our internet. Let's tech task manager, see what we're, we're up against. I don't know, I think the ISO on, the, on this camera is too high for you to see, but we are using 88% CPU just turning on, 95, 100% CPU turning on the PC. This thing is powerful, i3-4133 at 2.9 gigahertz. Uh, that is sad, this is very sad, this is honestly a sad, sad thing. And of course we've got, yep, 16 gigs of RAM and one disk. Perfect, that is all we expected to have. So, that's really it. I know this video, kind of bad. I mean, all my videos are bad, but you know, it, not much substance. I know you probably won't perform with something, but uh, I'm not gonna. This PC has a use. Some of you have figured it out, but it's got. It's like a one-time thing. It's all I'm doing with it. If I can even figure out how, I just realized now I actually have to do it. But uh, that's really it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed this little video where I just built like a really bad PC because there's gonna be a couple more. Don't forget, we've got this board, and guess what? It's got a CPU in it, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.